Mr. Hanna. Mr. Evans. Do you have the details of the mission prepared before we start recording? I do. Okay, so how about you tell me what was James Bond's assignment before we start? On this mission, Bond is trying to stop a terrorist from using a satellite to send EMP pulses and keeping the world hostage. And this is Goldeneye. And welcome to another exciting episode. We are recording, and this is Bond Never Dies. I am your agent, Jeremy Evans, along with Travis Hanna. Ba-da, ba-da. And let's go ahead and give the listeners that are just jumping in. This is a show about James Bond, all about James Bond. It's been James Bond. And we go we go through every single James Bond film. We talk about the plot. We talk about our favorite Bond. We talk about our favorite chick. We talk about the villains. We do the whole shebang. And if you are now jumping in, welcome to this mission. But also don't forget that we have the Sean Connery mission. And that's the first you know, six or seven episodes. We have our one George, George Lazenby edition and followed by, you know, uh, Roger Moore and Tim, Tim, uh, Timothy McDalton. Timothy I said, Dalton. I said McDalton. Can I believe that? God. Timothy McDalton. God, my files are terrible. Okay. So, <laughs> but the last episode we, we talked about was License to Kill, and that was in 89. So, the reason we're talking about this because this this episode is starting at six years later. Correct. With a whole new bond. Right. And it's it is and I want to talk about that for a second because it's funny that, you know, Travis and I were born we were born in 80, 85, 84. 84, 85, but we we're we we grew through the nineties. Yeah, for sure. And so when Bond came back, we, it felt like, you know, this is the first time we ever heard like Bond come back. We think this like this is the very first time James Bond became a series. Well, at least to me. Maybe to you, you're like maybe your dad talked about it way before. But for me, the first time I heard about Bond was this movie we're gonna be talking about. Like, oh, okay. So this is the Bond, Bond branch, and then you find out like, no, Bond's been around. It's like what? So yeah, no, I grew up watching the Bond films. My dad was a big fan. My brother is a movie file. Mm-hmm. So like, he introduced me. To, my my older brother introduced me to a mm-hmm. lot of stuff. But also the the big one for this though is the N sixty four game that came yeah, along. We'll get to that in just a second. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Now, granted that, um, you know why six years? I think it was at a point where, I think the Bond series was going. It was going over twenty years, basically, and I think it was slowly dying down. I felt. I think they felt like like ever since License to Kill. And living daylight, I think there was been some issues. You know, you mentioned on the last episode there were, you know, there was stuff going on, on the set, all this stuff, and I think people are just getting burned out by Bond. So, taking six years seems like a really good time to do that because when Goldeneye came back, it came in hard and big. Marvel, take note. Right, it went so big that even I was interested in it, and I was just a kid. Like I didn't know. You know, I'm a cartoon kid. I didn't know about Bond and all this stuff. But the funny part is I didn't watch GoldenEye until after the N64 video game, GoldenEye 64. And I think a lot of people at that time only knows that game, but sometimes forget that there's a movie that went with it. Some people probably thought it was just a 007 title, and GoldenEye was just like the game for it. Nothing like, oh, it's connected to the movies or anything like that. We've seen games do that sometimes. And when we first, when I first played it and you played it, Um, it was something totally different. It was, you know, a shooter that changed the way we play shooting games at the, at that time. Oh, 100%. And it was highly multiplayer, but the single player was really good. Um, it was a game where you had to do missions. That was insane. Uh, but you know. Well, not, not only that, but the very first level, you're like when, when the movie starts out. Bond is getting ready to bungee jump off the dam. Mm-hmm. When you start the game, you play what we didn't get to see. Exactly. You know? Uh, so you, it's more like... The first weapon they give you is the sniper rifle. Yeah. How awesome is that? Right. So basically, you're kind of playing like what actually is going on the you know the through the Nick and Granny, you know, because the movie's kind of skipped to the parts. You're like, yeah, you don't care about that. But, you know, we get the... Good action. Good job for Rare. And people that don't know Rare, Rare is the people that did like Banjo-Kazooie, Diddy Kong Racing. Conker's they were, Bad for a Day. Yeah, they were really known in, this, in the Nintendo 64 era. They were all over the place. And then, you know, they got bought by Xbox, and now they're over there doing Seize the Thieves that you probably know of and several other games that they're working on. Now, Not Conker's 2, by the way. Yeah, a lot they, of... They, uh, they need to make a Conker's 2? They do. Now, actually, it would have been awesome. You know, I actually want to Conker in Smash Brothers at one point. I thought he'd be a good addition. 
but he's Xbox now. I know, I know. I was just saying, just just hey, to say, it'd be awesome. Yeah, Put I'm just clouds saying. in there. Why not? Yeah, and so, um, well, you know, that's another story. But you know, Microsoft and Nintendo have been playing nice with each other lately, re- recently. So um, maybe something will happen one day. Anyways, but. Even the movie was a big blockbuster hit when it first came out, apparently. Like, oh, yeah. the trailer was a big hit. Everybody came back and talked about it. Like, I, I told you this went over my head, but I guess I was so into the game, I didn't really care about the movies that much until the next movie in the series will be, the next episode is my favorite, and we'll go to that one when it's time for it. But Golden Eye really set that stand up. It felt like it carried a little bit of that torch of Timothy Dalton's film into this one a little bit. Right, because he's not... He he makes he makes more one liners, mm-hmm. um, but he is pretty serious throughout. And the he's whole pretty thing. straight to the point still, right? And then the fact that Pierce Brosnan, the, the actor that plays in this one, was going to be the '80s Bond, but due to his uh, contract with Remington Steel series and whatnot, it didn't happen. So it's crazy that six years later he was still being considered, and offers still to come back. So at, after we go through all his movies, we'll talk about is Pierce Brosnan is still that favorite bond we used growing up. And so um, so let's go ahead and get into our our mission here, GoldenEye. And let's start with um, probably one of the best openings, I think, and one of the best top openings in a Bond film. But well, let's go ahead and start out with uh, a bungee jump scene. Travis, okay, well, well, before we get to that, oh, I, wanna, I wanna point out that uh, the very the very opening where we see the white dot over Bond and he's walking and he oh shoots. I see, I see on your I see what you're going with okay <clears throat> he like they changed it up mm-hmm. they they made it a little more jazzy like mm-hmm. smoother sounding mm-hmm. you know so like the tone was familiar but there was something different about it really it. it really felt like it was really trying to make sure this is this is a this is kind of a, a like a reboot of Bond for the nineties. And even the Pierce Brodman bond was a little bit different. The headquarters was different. M is different. They're really trying to like separate the Timothy Dalton to this well, one. I, I think they're trying to separate all of them from this one. That's true. Because I don't recall them bringing up him being married again after this. We'll find out. You know, um, there's so, one thing they did mention, but I, we'll talk about it when we get to that point. Okay. There's one part okay. they mentioned from from the last one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I agree. The jazzy was a little bit different. Kind of turned your head a little bit. Right. Like, hmm. Okay. They're really trying to make themselves stand away. out. Yeah, stand out a lot. So once again, let's start at the dam. Okay. So we start out. We see someone running, and they got a bunch of bungee cord wrapped around them, and we it turns out to be Pierce Brosnan. Uh, he hooks himself up to this railing. And just dives right off. No explanation. No, nothing no, at all. No one's chasing him. No words, nothing. It's just he's on his mission and he's trying to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, we also get to see a really neat gadget right at the beginning. He's got like this grapple gun that has a hoist. So he like shoots it into the ground and pulls himself closer to the ground with the bungee, ca- with the bungee cables attached. And then uses the same gun uh, to laser cut. A hatch so he can get into this dam which is actually a chemical weapons facility Mm -hmm. and um and what's the best way that he could come in while someone's taking a crap right yeah right everyone who's played the game knows uh you're gonna see like every highlight of the stages right in the first like 10 minutes of this of this movie and i never really put two and two together like that until like further on so uh while there was two people in the bathroom. One guy left, and this other guy's reading a newspaper on his on the toilet and everything like that. And then right when he put the paper down, Bond is right in his face, upside down, and just knocks him out. And he ends up, you know, making his way into the uh, the facility and everything like that. Now during during his time through the facility, he uh, he ends up running into his other agent, 006. The for the first time for a Bond, we had never seen actually like two Bonds spend that much time together. We're about to talk about right, and they seem like they're really good friends. Yes, because they're they're joking back and forth, and mm. you know just very very good. Uh, cohesion here between the two actors. Right. It wasn't one of those like, hey, we meet up. Okay, you go this way, I go that way, and we never talk again. And then maybe he dies off or something like that. But no, they actually talk and they're working together like, let's get this mission done. And that was really cool because 
um, the actor Sean Bean. This is probably one of his early, early careers of acting. Um, I thought he did a really good job c- coming in with the intro and everything, especially like they did the shadow work to kind of make him like, you know, mysterious for a second there. And then he was just a chill guy. You right. know, you know. He, oh, no, he's 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 pretty calm and collected throughout the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, even even in some parts where Bond has the upper hand on him, which I think is really great. Yeah. So they're making their way around the facility. They're you know, they're taking down people heading towards the lab because the goal was they were trying to get into this chemical area where they can basically blow up the base. Would you say they're trying to blow up the base? Uh, well, they're, so it's, per se. it's a chemical weapons facility. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to blow up the chemical weapon portion. Okay. okay. So, so yeah, I mean, the the whole base, if, if mm. they can take out the whole base. So basically, they're trying to actually shut the base down. Right. Basically. Then, yeah. then this place is no longer going to make chemical and so, weapons. And we see straight to the point that, like, while they're making their way, they're like, Trevelyan, that 006, by, by the way, is he was kind of ruthless at the very beginning, right? Because, like, he just... He could have knocked out the scientist that was kind of like in the way of the door, but he just straight to the point shot him. Didn't even give it a second thought. And Bond was like, okay, well, I guess you're going to do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. So they're making their way in there, and then their goal is to try to, you know, set the bomb up and everything like that. But, of course, the alarm set off, and they're trying to hurry up and get this stuff uh, organized and get ready to blow up. But this, um, I guess, general... Uh, his name is Oromov. Oromov, uh, him and his group comes in. And this is the interesting part about this scene because the fact that they decide to shoot through the bulletproof glass first and then blow up the door instead of the other way around. So while Trevelyan was trying to stall as Bond did it, uh, Bond was trying to set up the bomb, it all backfired. And Trevelyan is at gunpoint by the general. And Bond has to decide, you know, if he's going to rescue him or not, even though Trevelyan told him, hey, destroy everything let me die so instead of setting the bomb for six minutes as it was planned he set the bomb for three minutes and one of the ways he thought he can get out of the situation was carry this giant i guess this what'd you say like a i don't know it's a rolling, a cart. It's, a a cart. Rolling, it's a rolling cart, cart that has some of these uh canisters on them with the chemical weapons mm-hmm. and they specifically say you know be careful because they'll blow up even one guy was trigger happy he was so nervous he shot and he missed thank god and the general just shot him right in the head that's right just yeah. killed him and but but this is actually like this is the scene everybody talked about when this movie came out because it's so funny it's hilarious but bond is so serious about doing this <laughs> yeah that it's just it's like it's like, yeah, I'm going to hide behind this cart, and it's really quiet, and all you can hear is the squeak of the wheel yes. as yes. it's rolling, you know? And like, I actually really like that. I really like, I, I, I think I, you couldn't do it any other way. I really want him to be really serious about it, because that would have been funny. Well, if, they, if they were trying to make it funny about it, then it wouldn't be funny. Well, e- even the general at this point, like, cracks a smile, like, really? W- where are you going to go? There's nowhere for you to right. go. But Bond activates a conveyor belt and uh, manages to escape. Right. When his wild shooting and shot down a giant, like, full of, like, these crates at the very top, full yeah. of them falling down. And, like, someone, I don't know how they got up and kept going, but uh, Bond managed to make it out of the base. And uh, there was a pilot that was ready to fly off, but Bond managed to catch up to it and knock him out. But for some reason, too, Bond um, couldn't quite get a hold of the plane because he ended up, you know, Falling like falling uh falling back out of it. Right. And so the then, plane the plane is unmanned, heading for this cliff. Yeah. And so Bond is uh took out one of the one of the Michael um the one of the gentlemen in a motorcycle and he gets it and he's trying to catch up with the plane. And right here was the part that got me like, no way. Like this was like this was awesome. So the plane already flew off and it's going straight down the cliff. And Bond is falling right at it, not even giving it a second thought. Nope, he just he just takes that motorcycle right off with it, right, and dives down after that plane, man. And he gets in the plane and he tries to pull it up, and it was suspenseful. And he pulled up, but he managed to just get it out, get it up, give it up just in time before crashing to a mountain, circle around, and by the time that happened, the base was already blown up, and he fly flies off, and then we go right into our intro. So, like I said, like. That was probably one of the best openings oh, for yes. a Bond movie I haven't seen in a long time. And I, I when we finish part of the series, we are going to do our top five favorite openings of a Bond film. And so, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the song. Travis, this is something that you've been talking about for quite a while about the v- more visuals and more design stuff. So I think this one kind of 
lighten it up a little bit more and well i i just like the weird like mm -hmm. there's fire in the background there's bodies just kind of swaying and moving their arms not really dancing just just moving mm -hmm. and then you know you, from time to time you'll get a silhouette of bond Mm -hmm. uh, Tina Turner is, is singing so let's, so let's talk about the song first Okay. Did you like the song? I was a little half and half with it Like I liked it But I think it was too 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 mellow um, I, didn't, I didn't get too hype As I wanted to It was really really mellow I think the artwork was spoke, spoke louder than the song to me Well I will say the The song is mellow It's not like Duran Duran or AHA for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's I think it fits because the you know the Soviet Union collapsed in nineteen ninety four or USSR. And that's basically the theme of this uh, um this visual or all Soviet Union stuff. Right. So it's it's statues from the Soviet era. Uh so that's two years after the Soviet Union collapsed. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fitting uh because the Soviet Union was not a good place for people you know right so uh it shouldn't really be upbeat i don't think but mm. the to me the best the best thing about this opening is the visuals like there's guns flying barrels straight up with girls dancing on the end girls are on every single figure that uh, comes across this screen the the statues are, look awesome um it's it's just a really really interesting it's interesting to look at a mm -hmm. lot of color change as you notice like most of the old bonds they stick with like one color scheme and they do it but here you're going through you know orange purple blue you know you're going through several different colors and as you're watching this video you're seeing from a very proud russia to a collapsing one so you're seeing like right. these statues slowly tipping over and everything like that and these women are basically kind of illustrating the like the collapse and everything like that but the part about it is at the very end, you get what the meaning of golden eye is. It's, a, it's like what, like, you know, you see a girl blink and you see her eye. And that's where, like, you get golden eye at. So I, I would have been upset if you did the whole thing and you didn't show an eye. You sure. Know what I mean? Sure. But, you know, it's also great because it's been a while since an opening kept with the theme of what's happening with the movie. That's true. So a lot of this takes place in Russia, you know. Mm -hmm. the, they're coming out of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Russia is trying to reestablish itself. <clears throat> and so to have all those uh, Soviet themes and then them falling apart, and then this is kind of like really our first glimpse into what Russia looks like mm -hmm. after the collapse. Right. So in most Bond films, right when you get to, after the intro, you go into uh, the next scene, you, Which is nine years later. Yes, hang on. Uh, oh, there, there's oh. a reason why I said that, sorry. Is most of the old Bond movies, they kind of build up to something. This was different because right here, we get straight to another point. There wasn't like Bond like getting ready to go do something and then the action starts. He's already in the next action scene. And we're already straight nine years later of this movie and right where he's like driving. Like we never, I don't think, I can't think of a Bond movie, we get straight to another action scene just like that. You know, and mostly like maybe Bond's heading to the office or he's heading somewhere and he's slowly getting into his office or something like that. But here we're going to like, we don't even know what's going on yet. We know it's nine years and he's driving. Well, I mean, what was the one uh, It was Sean Connery? And he's it's kind of the same deal. He was driving on the road uh, in the Mustang. Was that golf? It wasn't Goldfinger and it wasn't. I don't remember. Anyway, anyway okay, we'll, we'll okay. Then it's rare. It. Then it's, but it's rare, rare then. for sure. Okay. Anyways, so next up, he's uh, he's taking a nice little trip, uh, driving around. I couldn't tell you where he is, but it's just taking place nine years, and he's she, he's with um. What would you say she is? She's she's a psychologist, and she's supposed to be evaluating his um sanity. Okay. Uh, you know they're uh, questioning Bond's ability. He's been an agent for. Since the 60s. Mm -hmm. So they're just checking to see. You know, you've right. been doing this quite a while. They, Are you hanging they, in there? Uh, M even makes the comment that he is a relic from an old era. Okay. You know, so mm -hmm. um, I think this woman is supposed to just kind of report in and right. decide if Bond is still fit to be in the field. But all this changed when a hot Ferrari car came, up, came upon 
and kind yeah. of did the whole, you know, uh, vacation movie. <laughs> well, I'd say it's a little bit more than the vacation movie because <laughs> she actually challenges into a race. Yes. And they're racing through these very narrow uh, roadways on, along the mountainside. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bond is in his Aston Martin DB5. And this mm-hmm. woman is in her is in a Ferrari uh, F three fifty five, and they are just zooming along, having a good time. This poor psychiatrist or therapist or whatever is deathly afraid because Bond is just having fun, mm-hmm. and and we know that it's not competi- like super competitive, because uh, we're shown a bunch of bikers. Mm-hmm. coming up on you know uh, riding their bikes through these winding uh streets or roadways because it's alongside a mountain mm-hmm. and bond like lets the ferrari go on ahead yeah it's just like kind of like a friendly little race right nothing it's, to take too seriously it's just having fun mm-hmm. and so um after after all that even though they were not trying to hit the biker mints, the biker mints, one of their bikes just broke off and then of course everything tipped over and they were in a struggle so they're making their way, continuing down, but the psychiatrist was not having it, and she demand her to st- just stop. Just stop the car, please. So he stops, and he kind of does his thing with her where, you know. Well, yeah, he's got champagne. Right, right. And so, of course, you know, they bond it, and then we go right into the next scene where he's heading to. Would you say this is a casino or was is it more like a hotel? It's a hotel. Casino? It's a hotel because he comes back later. But it looks like they're having a gala mm-hmm. or some kind of fundraiser. Mm-hmm. And the woman with the with the Ferrari is there playing baccarat. Yes, which I have no idea how to play that. I don't know how to play it either. But he noticed that you know she but, was that she was there by the name of Zinya on a top. And there's a lot of jokes that goes with that. You'll trust well, me. Well, yeah, she is the innuendo of this movie. Yes. And so uh, you notice her uh, Ferrari was there, and they end up playing a friendly game of Bach Rock. And uh, one of the things that stand out to me was they were play- while they were playing this game, they were playing with cards with no numbers on it, you know, in the corners mm-hmm. of it. And I was kind of – I don't know why I was fascinated by that because I was like, huh, that's really interesting. And so, cause I, no, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought they were playing uh, blackjack, but I was, I guess, I was wrong. Um, but from there, you know, she won a hand, and Bond won a hand, and she got really pissed about it. And you could tell right there that she is a very competitive woman. Yes. And so, so much that you know, later on, you'll find out later what she does. So from there, well, they kind of they, talk and mingle. They they talk for a minute. And uh, they, they they don't just talk. They're flirting hardcore. I wouldn't have it any other way. <clears throat> and uh, Bond mentions that he's a commander. And another guy walks up and she says, well, he's an admiral. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um, they were they were they were they were basically talking shit to each other, basically. And and he basically was like, uh, she said, oh, so what's your rank? And I was like, you know, she was she, well, she said Mr. Bond and he said yeah. commander. Yeah. And then he she goes, "Well, he's an admiral." Yeah. And I said, like, "Oh, I see you like to pull rank." So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and these are good one-liners. Yeah. Yeah, yes. they, they and, did a good job with the one-liners. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, like he it's delivered very dry but playful. Yes. So it's it's fun to listen to. Yes. Yes. Uh, kudos whoever wrote the uh wrote this wrote the script for this. They did a good job with the lines and everything like that. So, from there, Bond kind of like followed f- kind of followed but not followed so he was kind of like heading towards um you could say there was like a little play going on like i guess maybe you would what you say like kind of in the well, back i don't really understand what happens here because uh yeah it's like there's like an amphitheater type deal and there's like a play going on i think it has to be outside in the back well the thing is is bond comes up to the top mm-hmm. of the seating area for the amphitheater mm-hmm. and looks over just as Zinya and this admiral pull up to these these boat docks mm-hmm. in her Ferrari. Yes. So, how far away are the boats from where the opening is to? The- that's a good question, but that's why we have one of Q's gadgets to uh, help him out with that. Regardless, um, and by the way. There's a lot of Q branch stuff in this. Oh, so they're gonna tough. be pop. They're gonna be popping everywhere. So we'll be popping for. So what's up about the very first Q branch item that he got? By the way, that's one of my favorites. It's it's pretty awesome. So he he's got this like scope, 
Uh, it's like a one one lens scope, um, and he's he's watching Zinya and this admiral get on a boat called Manticore. And by the way, this camera can zoom all the way up to like a thousand. Yeah, that's it's, insane. And he's so, it's like it it's like if I was what would you say of an example? It's like seeing someone on the other side of a, like a giant lake, and you could just zoom in. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, pretty, it's pretty big. But um, at the same time, he can snap pictures. And it's transmitting back to his DB5. And when he gets back in the car, not only does he get a printout of everything he took a picture of, but Money Penny gives him a breakdown of every of the people he interacted with, who owns the boat, who the admiral is, who Zinya is. That's amazing. It's that, that's, in a matter that, of seconds. That, that's, that's amazing. That's like that's so awesome. That's awesome. This yeah, is, it's, it's pretty. Funny. <laughs> so. Uh, after Bond kind of, you know, did the paperwork and investigate all this, he decided to go into matters in his own hands. Now, while that was doing that, um, he notices a naval ship. Yes. That has a helicopter on it. Yes. Which who, is parked next to the boat that the Admiral and Zinya went to. And this is where we we actually get to see how uh, on the top is really like uh, she is. You could tell she takes pleasure in doing pain. Well, not just pain. She straight up squeezes guys to death yeah. with her thighs. Yeah, it's pleasure before pain for her. Like, because she takes pleasure in doing pain to people. Like, she's in bed with this guy, and she ends up, like, breaking his back, you know, killing him with, with her legs. She likes, she gets the urge. She gets really um, uh, turned on by death, but just pain in general, any kind of pain. Because later on, you will have, we'll talk about, you know, the fight scene that he has with Bond, and that was very painful stuff. So, anyways... After um, after he kills him, um, we see a mysterious man grab his uh, ID. We have no idea who that is yet. And while that's going, the next day happened, and Bond decided to go on the boat right, the next where the morning, helicopter was. Bond sneaks onto the manticore and sees Zinya driving in a dinghy, or not a dinghy, but in a speedboat or a motorboat over to where the naval ship is. And, of course, he gets seen by a guy and fights him off. And you know what I like? I, I know it's small, but I like how slick that was so quick. Yeah. It wasn't too over the top. I kind of like that. I think they really did a research of like, you know, you can wrap the, you can knock this guy down with wrapping him with a towel and knock him down, but you didn't have to make it over the top. You could have wrapped him down and kick him off if you wanted to, but it was like more just straight to the point. Let's move on. So while this happened, apparently this was a ceremony going on to demonstrate this tiger helicopter. Correct, and yeah. it's it's impervious to EMP attacks. Anything else? Um, well, basically, um, at the, and at this time, EMP was a big fear of the U.S. because mm -hmm. none of our stuff was shielded. Um, so to have a helicopter that was impervious was a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so we find out that Zinya and Ormov are actually on the naval ship for this grand reveal they kidnap or they they kill and steal the uniforms of the pilots mm -hmm. get in the helicopter and steal it basically and, and just it, fly off to, yeah, let's take it back to russia but bond finds the admiral's body and goes to try to stop them and soldiers on the on the deck of the ship stop him as the helicopter is taking off mm -hmm. and then the next scene is we're in russia and right there in Russia, I believe it's called uh, Sininya, I believe that's what the place is called. Severnia. Severnia, I'm way off. Okay. But there, are, it's a Space Weapons Control Center. In a very big world in, in one of the levels in GoldenEye. <laughs> yes. The snow, <laughs> the snow level, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. So from there, we get to meet um, one, of the, one of the, well, probably the main Bond girl of this movie. Yeah. Well, two two big characters. Yes. Boris. Yes. And Natalia. Yes. And uh, who have this playful banter back and forth because they're co-workers. Yes. Boris is basically like an amazing hacker. Right. Whatnot. And then um, the other woman by the name of. Natalia. Natalia. Sorry, you might have already said that. Natalia was, um, I guess, a second second programmer or yeah, whatever she, she's, she's a programmer she's not as skilled per se as he is because mm -hmm. um, he breaks into cia a computer yep. system mm -hmm. and sends them a virus uh he calls it a spike 
Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, after they're done, like doing their banter, she goes to get coffee and he goes outside to smoke a cigarette. Mm-hmm. But while he's out there, the helicopter that was stolen from Zinya and Ormov lands. Mm-hmm. And they come inside and give a soldier com- uh, key codes claiming that it's a test operation to get a device called Golden Eye. Mm-hmm. And now for people that the two people there, just to recap that again, you have on a top and then actually a uh, journal uh, or Yeah. Both of them are together. Just right. put that out there. So um, the general gets the device and Zinnia shoots everybody. Just kills everybody. Just off. Kills everybody. It, Natalia it's... is in the kitchen getting mm-hmm. coffee. So she's hiding and Ormov and Natalia activate golden eye. And we don't know what the target is. We just know that they put a target somewhere. But what do we know so far about the Golden Eye? The Golden Eye is a rectangle with like a uh, gold dome that sticks out in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it fits into the computer and is the main source of activating a satellite in space, Mm -hmm. which is the actual Golden Eye device. And it shoots an EMP burst that knocks out electricity. Uh, that they can concentrate over any country in the world. Okay. So while they were doing that, they actually heard a, a noise. And uh, it was coming from the kitchen where Natalia was. And so Anatop went to go to investigate it. And while that was happening, um, she managed to fool her by pretending that she was going up into um, the ceiling. Right. Like, but an, she, like an AC yeah, event. Yeah, an AC event. But she happens to actually be hiding in a cabinet. Right, so Zinya shoots up at the vent and thinks that she kills Natalia, mm-hmm. and really Natalia um, just waits for her to get quiet, and then she comes out. But now while all this is happening, Bond is at MI6 trying to figure out what happened to the helicopter, who might have stolen it, who mm-hmm. Zinya was, and while he's talking to uh, an MI6 agent, the new M shows up, played and- by Judy Dench. Yes, this is the first female M in the series. So you could tell right now that they're really, really trying to make themselves very different from the past shows. And so. Well, and what's nice here is they they start out don't by not liking each other, per se. Yes. Um, they get they get a little briefing of real time. They even make a dig at the U.S. Uh, like they have real time satellite. Uh, mm-hmm. As opposed to wait, they're, they're basically being more proactive than reactive. Mm-hmm. And um, essentially, what has happened is when they activated Goldeneye, or, or when they went to go try and find Natalia in the kitchen, one guy was half alive and activated an alarm, which triggered three MiG fighters to go to the base as a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Ormov and Zinya have to activate Goldeneye and get out of there fast. And Bond and M are watching all of this take place in real time. Yeah. So, of course, Natalia, of course, we know she's alive, but uh, that didn't stop, you know, from the satellite, you know, blowing up everything in that facility. So she managed to get out there by the, you know, um, barely by climbing her way out and just walking out. Well, like, she knows that Golden. She's watching this monitors, watching the timer go down, and that Golden Eye is going to be activated on that base. Yes. And the while she's while she's underground or while she's in the facility, the airplanes that are nearby get hit by the EMP also, mm. and one of them crashes into the facility, trapping her inside. And then eventually this tower falls through and she's able to climb out. But the reason the helicopter was stolen was for this purpose. Yes. Ormov and Zinya escape in the helicopter, which is impervious to EMP yes. attacks. Yes. And it's funny how Bond, while, while, while the whole commotion goes on and everything like that, and they lost their signal and then they kind of got it back a little bit, uh, how did Bond just take a wild guess and just – Scan closer and say, "Look, I saw one survived." It was like, it was like "Really, yeah. Bond? Really? You got really?" <laughs> I call BS on that, but at the same time, whatever, man, whatever. And so, so what happens next is uh, Bond is in the office with um, 
with Miss M. With M in her office. And this is where we we like Travis mentioned earlier, we get to see where they where they stand with each other. Well, I think this is an this is an interesting scene and something that the movie studio should do more of. So I'm I don't recall there being a big outroar that Judy Dench was playing M. Mm-hmm. But this scene lets everyone know that she means business. Yes. So Bond in this scene is all of us. He's displeased that the old M is gone and that there's this new M. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's done in a, in a quick um, Judy Dench or M asks Bond if he wants a drink. And Bond says, uh, your predecessor kept cognac in the bottom drawer. And she just cuts him off and says, I prefer bourbon and starts pouring Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm different. Don't try to make me what I'm not. Yeah. Then as they're sitting down talking, she says that you you don't think I have the balls to do what it takes to get the job done. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you right now that that's a mistake on your part. Yeah, and even the part she even threatened, like, like I'll, I will not care if I send you out there and you die. Right. Like, like, straight up, like, I have other agents. Don't act like you're the best around here. And I kind of like that because that's what they like the movies. They lean on him to being the best and it's more like we have like 10 other agents that no one knows about. They can do your job too. So well, don't but, act like you're the best. But this is also good because it's not like they're not shoving women down our throats. Yeah. They're just saying we uh, women can do these roles also and be badass. Yes. You know? Yes. Or, whereas in the modern era, it seems to be like every time you turn around, everything's got to be remade with women instead of just mm-hmm. finding a character that a woman could fit a role for. Right. And fitting her in there properly. Yes. I agree. I agree. And um and she wasn't and she could have been a character that could have been way over the top. Oh, a hundred percent. And she's one hundred percent not. That's, yeah. So um with all that, M sends them out to go find the golden eye. And of course, you know, at the end you find her, she does have a little bit of a nice side. This is the thing this is the part that was good for her because this charm is like, hey, come back alive though. But Right. D- d- but remember, if you know, if shit hits the fan I got to do what I got to do. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so we're heading right to Russia. Yep, we're in St. Petersburg and we're at this meeting with Russian officials and they're all, they're all waiting for Ormov to show up mm-hmm. and, um, or they want Ormov to give a briefing on what happened at that facility, uh, that was hit by Goldeneye. And he gives them some BS story. And, and he says he wants to resign. Right, that it was his fault, but he's some kind of hero. Mm-hmm. And they, they consider him a huge patriot and an asset. Mm-hmm. So they're asking for his guidance. And he, you know, just basically plays it off. Uh, but then he finds out that two people survived. And he knew one of them. Right, he knew Boris, Boris. survived. Yes, but he did not know about Natalia. And t- 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 Travis, correct me wrong. Did that face just not ring out like you lying about some face? <laughs> right. <clears throat> no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's at this point that we probably realize that Boris is working with Orma. Yes. Yes. Hands down. Why is we'll find out in a second. But let's go back to Bond getting prepped for Russia. That's right. He goes. It's into time Q-branch. for Q branch. And there's a lot. Let's get started. Okay, so we start out with Q rolling up in a wheelchair and a broken foot, uh, or his foot in a cast, and Bond asks him uh, if he's okay, and he shoots a rocket from out of the cast (laughs) into a wall. Uh, And then they're walking around, and there's a parachute being folded up behind this BMW Z3, which was the, the, the introduction of this car. Um He's got stinger missiles and... Which he never gets used, by the way, for the listeners. So go ahead and put that out in the opening. Never gets used, guys. Yeah, Just putting it out there. It's a little sad. Well, they're, yeah. they're cramming a parachute in the back of his car, too, and that never gets used. And never gets used. Yes. Um, then he gets a leather belt that has a repelling cord on it that's uh, able to hold his body weight alone, nobody else. Mm-hmm. And then he gets a pin where three clicks on the back activates an explosive inside. Three more clicks deactivates the explosive. It, you know, you know what's funny about that pin? That gets very confusing later on. Anyways. It, it, it does. Go on. 
So uh, anyway, Q kind of demonstrates some of the stuff for Bond. Um, and then uh, he's on his way to St. Petersburg. But there's one more thing that you forgot, Travis. He mentioned something that is dedicated to the last movie. He said while he was mentioning the car, he says, now that you got your license to kill renewed. Oh. <laughs> yes. So that there was like they played it off like it was after, but it wasn't. It was and wasn't, right? So I just want to throw that out there. I was like, okay. oh, okay. He said that's interesting. So anyways, move it on. <laughs> We are heading to, uh, let's see here. We are heading to now. He's heading there now, where he's meeting up with his, I guess, A CIA contact, Mister Wade, Jack, Jack Wade, Wade. Which, yeah, he, which is the same actor that played as a certain villain in Living Daylight with Timothy Dalton. So uh, right. check that out. That's kind of well, fun. He was the. They didn't want to give him Phoenix, but he wasn't. He wasn't able to be Phoenix in this one. Yeah, <laughs> you could have given Phoenix, Jack Wade. Anyways, anyway, um, so he arrives and Bond gives him the the code phrase, and he doesn't give it back to him the way he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bond like holds him at gunpoint, and he's like. All right, I'll give you half. Like, he gives him half of the phrases. Is that good enough? <laughs> He's and like, Bond's like, no, show me the flower. <laughs> and Jack, like, or Wade has this this flower tattoo <laughs> that says Muffy. <laughs> it said roses all around it. <laughs> and uh, that's how Bond knows that he the contact is legit. Fun fact, that's the name of his third ex-wife. Yep. Going on. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that are going on in between this. As he's trying to... Get to where he gets to, you know, and Jack's car is kind of messing up a little bit. Natalia is also there, and she gets in contact with Boris at going to, would you say it's a computer pawn shop or some sort? Um, no, it's, it's just a computer store. Uh, she acts like she's going to make a huge purchase but wants to test the merchandise first mm -hmm. and manages to uh, make contact with Boris, who sets, up, who sets up a plan to meet her at a church. Yes. And so from there, we know it's a trap, and she ends up uh, getting captured by... Um, well, Boris shows up with Zinnia. Yes. And they both take her, and, they, and then she disappears for a little bit. But Wade takes Bond to this guy, uh, Zakovsky, who has a limp. Um, if anybody's seen Harry Potter, it's the guy who plays Hagrid. Mm -hmm. Um and Bond is the reason he has a limp, so he's got a little bit of a vendetta against mm -hmm. him. Yes. So they're meeting up, and Bond decided to give him a welcome, you know, by surprising him with a gun to his head. But also, too, he had somebody that was kind of looking out for him and had a gun to Bond's head. So Bond is um, in the bar sitting and talking while his, uh, I would say his girlfriend or his wife is singing a Russian country song of some well, sort. <clears throat> so it's Mini Driver. Mini Driver, yeah. With a Russian accent, singing country music. Yes. Um, what Bond put it, it sounds like, you know, a cat dying. Yes. And um, he, what's his face, did not take that very lightly. Well, because that's, yeah, Zakovsky did not like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're kind of exchanging information, and he needs him to deuce him to Yanis. Right. There's a there's a guy named Yanis. Nobody, nobody knows who he is for sure. Um. But he's offering a, a setup deal where he'll give Boris $200 million if he'll set him up with a meeting with Yanis. Mm -hmm. And things things get a little hostile because Zakovsky is still mad about his limp. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was talking, and Bob was talking about, like, it's like, look, man, it was just common courtesy why I didn't finish you off. He said, oh, yeah, oh, okay, well, let me, pay, let me repay you. And he ends up shooting both sides of this... Uh, both sides of him, and then aim for the crotch. And he's like, no, 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 no. So, so that was, I like that because that was the first time like, we see Bond actually like lose his cool well, yeah. for a minute. He was like scared. Kind of mind a little bit of goal, goal finger ish per se. And so, but uh, he ended up working with him and then we, we move on. Right. Um, it cuts to Bond being in a swimming pool. Um, and what? I mean, Zakovsky going to help him out. Uh, so Bond's back at his hotel, at his hotel or whatever, and he's swimming alone in this pool, and Zinya shows up, 
and he catches her. Uh, she's she's turned on the steam in like the steam bath type thing. It's an interesting place. Yeah, I can't really explain it. I I've never been. This but someone place. shows up. But Z- Z- Zinnia's there, and she starts kissing him, and then she like bites his lip, and then she starts like fighting him. Yes. And he ends up taking her and burning her ass on the uh, the the sauna uh, uh, stove, I think it is. Yeah, or call it yeah, a stove yeah. top, but it's it's where the the steam comes out, and he burns her ass and knocks out another henchman. <laughs> um, and tells her to take him to Yanis. I love it too because he's like, he's like, no, no, like like a dog, like no. And she was pissed. And so, um, so they end up heading up to uh, a statue graveyard, yeah, which if you've just, probably seen in like in the intros, all those little statues that fell, this is where kind of this location is. Yeah, just a bunch of Soviet statues. I don't know um, if they were or why they're there, but it's, it's I call it a, a statue graveyard. But we find out that 006... She karate chop Xena in the back. That's the first time we ever seen a karate chop anybody. Well, and that's why it was so deadly in the game. It's so awesome. Yeah. Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted uh, to mention that. But we find out that 006 is Yanis. <gasps> and I'm going to point out that this is the first time that the very opening where Bond is already on a mission ties into the rest of the movie. Normally... Bond will finish a mission, and then we see a whole new mission. Ah, this I see is, what you're doing. Okay, the whole thing is tied in together. Yes, Oromov is from the beginning. Yes, Trevelyan is here now. From yes, the beginning because everybody thought he was dead. Right, mm-hmm. and we find out nine years. What the heck have you been doing for nine years? That's well, insane. I'm oh, sorry. I just want to. He's been plotting this. That's a long time. So, but why? We find out that Trevelyan's family was betrayed by the British and his father ended up killing himself and his mother and the British secret Ser- or the the British soldiers or whoever thought that he was too young to remember what happened when in reality he's just been waiting for the right moment to strike to get his revenge on Britain so he has been a 006 agent for quite a while got the, set this whole opportunity up since the beginning to lead us to this point nine years later. Correct. That's insane. So he, the whole the whole thing is is he's going to use Goldeneye over Great Britain to shut it down as a revenge for what when, happened for when they betray for when the British troops betrayed the Russians mm-hmm. and so and killed his family. So you know at their bond you know was a little shocked and then he kind of got himself back together. He took a dart to the neck and uh, he was knocked out. Right. But he wakes up in uh, our very special helicopter. And someone's screaming his ear like no other. <clears throat> it's Natalia. And she's basically trying to get his attention. Uh, but they're both strapped down to the helicopter, like to the seat where they can't move their hands or their legs. Yes. And uh, Trevelyan activates two, two missiles from the helicopter, which are heat seeking. And they fly off, and because they don't find any heat signatures... They just blow up? Well, they, they turn back oh, around because the helicopter... That's right. Heat signature. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And Bond manages to activate uh, the escape hatch. Yes. Which launches Bond and Natalia up into the air, mm. and they're able to... Yeah, and what's interesting about the eject thing was like it was the whole cockpit, per se, not just two chairs... Right, so be- so that was interesting. It, it launches the the propellers from the helicopter blade off, mm-hmm. uh, a prop off, and then the whole center cabin shoots up. Yeah, that was very interesting. So from there, they thought they were okay until the Russian army came and you know picked them up and then put them in in a kind of like a interrogation room per se. And this is the first time we get Bond and Natalia kind of like talking. Right, and, Nat- sure. and Natalia tells Bond about Boris. Yes. And that he's a hacker. Um, he's basically the reason she's there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then while all that's going on, um, the defense minister from from the orig- from the first time we're in St. Petersburg, mm-hmm. who was questioning Oromov about what happened at the, the satellite base, mm-hmm. uh, shows up and is interrogating Bond. And Bond and Natalia basically 
stops them from arguing. I love I love that conversation, by the way. It was so funny because they were questioning each other so much. And like, I said, what do you know about the bomb? What do you know about the code? What do you know this? What do you know that? It was just a funny, like, it was very slick talking to each other. Right. Trying to outsmart each other. Like, what do you know? But what do you know? What kind of thing? Yeah. And then Natalia's like, you guys with your boys and toys and all this stuff. And so, right. Well, she tells them that Ormov set off the golden eye mm-hmm. and attacked the facility. Well, right after she's done saying that, Ormov walks in and is trying to take over the the interrogation uh, and realizes that Natalia has told these guys what's gone on. Mm-hmm. So he takes a gun and he shoots the defense minister and his bodyguard and then tells Bond that he's going to frame him for the murder. Yeah, because he used his gun. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it turns into an escape scene. Where Bond and Natalia are trying to get out of this underground. And I love this action scene because, one, there is bulls flying like no other. But the best part is these soldiers are just throwing themselves off the off the cliff. And they're doing flips. They're turning. They were getting into it, man. Like It felt like Bond was doing work. But if you really sit there like they were just like freely jumping into this stuff. It was it was hilarious. I loved it. Um but, you know, that took them through different parts of the area. They head to the library. Another Bond stage for people that didn't know. And where he tilts all these bookshelves down to block one side so they have to walk to the other side. And while Bond and, them, while Bond and Natalia are hiding, Natalia ruined it by knocking, out, knocking down some books. Yeah, she's more, not, she's more not, gameplay. She's not good at being quiet. No, she's not. She gave herself away in the kitchen and she gave them away here. Right, right. And so she ends up accidentally getting captured because she fell through the... Through Great. the f- f- floor, per se, because it was kind of like a rail gated floor up the top. And so Bond kind of had him went on without without her. Right. He used his belt to grapple across the library and out a window mm-hmm. where he's outside uh, and he's watching Natalia be taken, get, get basically kidnapped, put in a vehicle and they're driving off. Yes. And so Bond has to figure out how he's going to escape the rest of these guards and go after them. But before we take a break, there's one thing that he you mentioned in this files, and I want to talk about it for a second. Why did you decide to call this the Infinity Bullets? <laughs> oh, because Bond never has to reload in this entire <laughs> That's scene. That's so true. That's he, so he's true. got he's got an AK-47 and is just shooting it like crazy, and never once runs out of bullets. Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue where this mission goes. Okay. Hey. Thank you so much for listening to this episode as part of the Endgame Boss Program, a network of gaming and other variety shows. And remember, you can find all these shows on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. All you have to do is just follow and subscribe and enjoy all our other variety shows. Like the Endgame Boss Podcast, When Jeremy Met Nam, and Finally Do a Movie Podcast, Bond Never Dies, in the Cabinet Sessions. So thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the show. And welcome back to part two of The Bond Never Dies. I'm your agent, Jeremy Evans, along with Travis Hanna. Ba-da, ba-da. And he was, Bond and um, Natalia were a bit of a, in a jam. Natalia was captured and Bond's on his own. And He's stuck in like this courtyard. Yeah, and while that's happening, you know, he sees that Natalia and... Uh, Ormov. Were basically, you know, on the on the way out the door, so... Bond needed somewhere to catch, uh, find a way, some way to catch up, and he does something that I think if you're watching the movie for the first time, you didn't see it coming. But he went out, he came out like a badass, and what was it? A giant ass tank? Because like during this whole time, you saw tanks everywhere, but you never thought like, okay, he's not gonna get in a tank or anything. Yeah, like but that. but they introduced it in the best way possible. We see Ormov's car dr- like turn a corner and come down the street with a big wall behind him. Mm-hmm. And just as he goes off screen, this tank just busts right through that wall. Definitely pulled a Kool-Aid. Being driven by Bond. Yes. And this this is probably one of my favorite scenes. And this is a long scene. It is a very long yeah, scene. Yeah, like Bond and them. It's a, long, it's, it's a good car chase scene. Yes. And it, it was definitely a great um, – get. I think I think it was filmed very well because, like, you just, you're just seeing everybody make kind of a mistake. Like, Bond did a 360 with a tank because he made the wrong turn, um, you know – all the um the vil- um the car dr- uh, chase were going through all like the difficult stuff that the tank wouldn't go through. I'm gonna go down this dark, um, this deep alley that even the car could barely go. Right, tank it's very just narrow. Through. 
Yeah. But but Bond is like fishtailing this Jeep down the road. Uh, Oromov is freaking out. Yes. Because he never expected that Bond would be in a tank. Let alone he let alone he knows how to use one. People that's why sometimes you forget that he was a commander. Right. But he knows how to ride one of those. And so, and just the the special effects and the and the destruction was just really cool. Even oh, yeah. when the men, uh, when he had backup to get him, he's like running over the cars and all this stuff. And by the way, he never shoots one thing out of that until like the very end of this whole sequence. Oh yeah, no, it's great. And so, uh, just driving through buildings. And you know, there's really not much to say because it's better if you saw it for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, watch it for yourself. This is like a remarkable scene. So I'll let you guys watch that scene and enjoy that. But let's speed it up a little bit and go right to... Um, so the, all of this ends up at a train. Mm -hmm. And Oromov loads Natalia onto the train and immediately takes off. While as Bond, like, pulls up in the tank and sees it taken off. Yes. So <clears throat> on the train, Trevelyan is waiting with Zinya. Or Trevelyan is there and introduces himself essentially um we get a little bit more exposition about what's going on and ormov is telling him that bond escaped which trevelyan's not happy about not but happy. he's not losing his cool either yeah it's one of those things where like you know when it's all over i'm probably gonna kill you kind of thing but we don't have time right now we need to just get this done so after a small exchange and everything like that um they're riding down the train and everything and trillian's kind of like kind of you know, trying to put his dominance on Natalia, kind of, you know, kind of like feeling her out, kind of like, you know, getting really close to her face and everything, talking about how him and Bond have this really good relationship. Like, he knows what Bond is thinking. He knows how how he does his stuff. He can read him like a book and all this stuff. Now, while this is all going on, uh, a showdown was about to happen because Bond comes out like, like this, like mysterious, like like a like a think of it like a like a uh, horror monster coming out of the dark. But here he is slowly creeping out of this out of this tunnel on the train track with a tank. Right, and, and so, he parks it like in front of the the train, expecting it to stop. Yes, and so Trevelyan uh, finds out, and he says, "No, full speed ahead. Right. We're going. We're we're not backing down." So Bond is up uh, shooting for the first time, and like. Basically shoots the front of the thing. This thing is still going, flaming hot, burning. And Bond gets out, and the train collides with the tank, and it stops. And it gets derailed. Yeah. yeah. So Bond makes his way in where he ends up meeting up with Trevelyan and um, Zinya. Zinya while they were on the ground. But it ended up being kind of a bit of a stalemate because while he had a gun pointed at them, he had uh, Urimov, Urimov had and Natasha, Nata Natasha you know, at gunpoint. Natalia, not Natalia. Natalia sorry, not Natasha. <laughs> Natalia. Boys and Natasha. Yeah, Natalia at gunpoint. <laughs> and basically, uh, Trevelyan had to choose. He's like, look, he's either the job or the girl. And Bond thought he pull he would do, could pull off both, but he didn't. He failed. And they end up being locked into the train well, cabinet. Well, he kills Oromov. Sorry. He shoots Oromov. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He kills Oromov. At, and, which gives Zinya and uh, Trevelyan time to escape. Okay, yeah, and then lock them inside. And uh, Trevelyan tells Bond that he's going to give him, that there's a bomb, and he's going to give him the same six minutes that Bond gave him to escape. And it comes in full circle because six minutes is actually a lie. That's three minutes he has. Right. And so. So Natalia. Or, yeah, Natalia is trying to get in contact with Boris. Uh, or trying to track where Boris is, so they know where to go. Yes, to find where everyone where. Trevelyan and the clock is, is ticking, and the last thing they saw was the word Cuba. Right, and they managed to get out and escape, and then from there, I mean, they made it out alive, and that led to you know Bond and Natalia kind of like you know chilling, relaxing, and everything like that. Um, and then that leads them straight to I believe they're driving around in Cuba. But yeah. And uh, Bond has a Z3, which we don't really see much out of. And as they're driving, this plane lands in front of them, and it's Wade. Oh, Wade. And Wade and Bond swap vehicles. Wade takes his BMW, uh, and Bond tells him not to push any buttons. Right. You know, uh, and uh, Bond and Natalia take the plane. And uh, he's supposed to go back and get um, the Marines ready for when Bond needs to the need, um, when he when Bond's needed, him and the Marines were going to come in, and or the Navy, 
we're going to come in and help him out in case. Right. So Bond and uh, Natalia are making their flying. Basically, they kind of relax first before going out. Well, they, there are, there's a scene in between where they're on this beach. Yes. And Bond is having Bond is processing the fact that Trevelyan is still alive and that he's going to have to kill his friend. Yes. You know. Um, Nat- and that's what made it so that made it so good for to me for that part because the fact that like Bond doesn't talk about other agents. No. So this was actually kind of like really interesting. I was like, wow. Right. Like this Bond really kind of cares a little bit more than just like looking just looking badass all the time. Well, and the the little bit of exposition we got at the very beginning of the movie where they're kind of bantering a little bit and talking back and forth and we get in like a five minute period the idea that these two are really good friends. Yes. You know, and then the betrayal that uh, Bond had, like the fa- the, betra- the look of betrayal on his face when he realized Yanis is Trevelyan, mm-hmm. you know, was, was, ex- was spectacular. Yes. And then here we are, Bond is contemplating, like not only has my friend been alive this whole time, but I'm, I'm going to be the, I'm the one who has to stop him. Yes. You know, it's very much Captain America and Bucky. Right, right. And the one the one thing that was kind of weird about this was the conversation with him and Natalia. Because Natalia, she was kind of going off a little bit on Bond about, like, why you have to do stuff like this. Like, you know, and Bond was talking about, well, I mean, this is this is the best way for me to be me, be alive. You know, I have to do it this way. And that, that was kind of the weirdest conversation I seen them lead to him bonding it. Yeah. And so, uh, after all that, um, you know, after bonding it, they end up taking up, getting on the plane that was left by Jack, and they end up scoping Cuba, trying right. to find out where this base is. And while they were taking taking a flight, they noticed this giant lake, and they were it was kind of curious. So Bond said he wants to circle around again, but then a missile flew out of the water and shot the plane down, and they crashed, and they were unconscious. I want to say it looks like about maybe like 30 minutes to an hour or some sort. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, Bond pulls Natalia from the, the wreckage, and she's already passed out, and then he passes out after, shortly mm. after getting her out. And so, And then it, when he wakes up, there's a helicopter uh, above him, and so he stands up right as Zinya comes rappelling down and kicks him right in the face. Yeah, it was almost like he... I don't know if he was in a daze or he was dreaming or something, but, like, he took that foot to the chest like no other. And then this was kind of like their final showdown of them fighting it out and everything like that. Um, she actually had Bond on the ropes and about to kill him, and then Natalia came and tried to hit her with, the like, the uh, like the gun. Right. Um, but she ended up stopping him, and then Bond la- ended up latching... The hook that she used. The, to, the, the repelling cable? Yeah. And then she sh- he shot at the helicopter, and the helicopter match- actually got killed somehow. That was a lucky shot like no other. Well, it, it, the, the helicopter, like, he shot at the helicopter, and the helicopter pulled Zinnia up off mm-hmm. the ground and smashed her into a tree, which I'm pretty sure broke her back. I want to say it broke her back. That's what I want to say it uh-huh. did. But because the helicopter was caught on her body and the tree... The, the helicopter ended up crashing. crashing too. So two for the price of one. So after all that, now we see the finale part where we get to see what was coming out of the water. Right. It was this giant satellite per se coming, no, rising it's, it's up. That's exactly what it was. A giant satellite dish. And this sequence is actually really, really funny because it takes a while for the water to drain. So we get the idea of... This thing is huge. Yes. But as the last bit is going down, it's like reversed animation. Yes. You know, like yeah. like they filmed water coming up out of it. And yeah. then for this scene, just reversed. Yeah. Because there's like backwards splashes. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah, it was weird because I guess they were trying to portray that there's like a, a drain at the bottom of this yeah. instead of like a giant. Like, I guess the satellite wouldn't have the. Okay, if you didn't normally, the water would just sit there on the satellite. But I get they had a little drain, so it just the anime the the work they did just made it really weird. I was kind of freaked out too. I was like, okay, whatever, right? I, I guess. I and mean, so this thing is huge. They they did the best they could. Yeah. So, um, but while all that is happening, Trevelyan and Boris have loaded the Golden Eye into the computer, and the whole the whole thing is 
there were two two bases that could activate Goldeneye. There's the one that was in Russia, which they blew up, mm-hmm. and then this one. Yeah. So they specifically blew up that one so no one could stop them mm-hmm. from t- uh, shooting an EMP. So over this is the only one in the world. This is the only one left that could act, that could control the Golden Eye. Yes. So while that's happening, Bond and Natalia are trying to make their way to get inside the satellite, and Trevelyan already sent a bunch of soldiers after them, and they make they finally make their way down into the satellite and work their way around where they end up at the. Um, well, they end up sliding down it. Yes, yes, during the shootout. And they, like I said, they managed to make it inside. And this is where we see um, one of the big shootouts where... Well, the, uh, something very important happens here. Oh, my apologies. Uh, Bond uh, and Natalia... Uh, Bond activates or sets up two mines mm-hmm. and punctures a couple of chemical tanks. Yes. Uh, remote mines from the video game for anybody mm-hmm. who's a fan. Um, and tr- they take him straight to Trevelyan and Trevelyan like uh, immediately like pulls out his pen and says, Oh, is Q still up to his old tricks? And then looks at his watch and says, Oh, a new model. He's like, do I still push this button here? And it <laughs> deactivates the mines. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Trevelyan like basically is stolen all of his gadgets. Well, while Trevelyan and Bond are talking, uh, Boris is there, and they captured Natalia. And what was Natalia doing at the time? Uh, she snuck into a computer room. No, not yet. Um, she was no, she did. She snuck yeah, into she... a computer room, and she changed the passwords on uh, Boris's passwords, uh, so that he couldn't stop. Or she rerouted the Golden Eye and changed his password so that he couldn't stop it. Yes. Sorry so... about that. So Boris is like super pissed, so pissed that he just picks up the a pin. That well, I, well, Natasha slapped him because sorry, yeah. because she, he, he was going to have her killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that knocked over all of Bond's that's stuff right, that that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. had taken, and he picks up the pin. Now, one thing we didn't mention at the beginning of this is he's got this fast this twitch where he clicks on the back of pins and then like twirls them in his hands and keeps clicking. It's like a nervous twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he's doing that with the exploding pin, and Bond is trying to keep up with counting how many yes, times. Yes, dude, I had a hard time keeping count with this. I'm like, this thing should have. Okay, wait, what? Right. Huh? It got a little confusing. So the the Golden Eye satellite is going into Earth's atmosphere and getting ready to burn up. Boris thought he could crack her codes, but can't. So. They're trying to get her to tell him, and Boris gets frustrated and gets in Natalia's face, mm-hmm. and Bond takes the pen and throws it into some of the, the liquid from the chemical tanks that he had punctured, mm-hmm. and it creates a giant explosion. And that gave uh, Natalia and Bond a chance to escape. <clears throat> Correct. And they end up getting in the elevator, and while they're getting up to escape, and Trevelyan is talking to Boris, like, fix this now, Okay. So while Bond and them are, Bond and Natalia are trying to escape, you know they end up uh, knocking out a guard by faking out that Natalia was down, and he went to go investigate. Well, right, that. they have to go to the transmitter. Yeah, so because uh, the transmitter is will verify that they cannot stop, because Boris is still working. Yes, he's trying to break these codes before the satellite. Burns yeah, and up. he's going to get shot in the head if he doesn't do it. Right. So Bond stick. Uh, there's a big chain that's rotating the giant dish, and Bond sticks a pipe in. Uh, like it's like a giant bicycle chain, mm-hmm. and Bond sticks a giant pipe in to stop it from rotating to get yeah. it into position. Yeah. So while Bond is also at the same time, Trevelyan is kind of chasing after him, shooting at him. Right. And they end up getting duking it out and everything like that. And then uh, Trevelyan ran away the first time, but he was bleeding because of Bond. He got shot, and he starts catching up with him. He's following the trail of blood, and then he gets fooled, and uh, ends up getting uh, kicked down. What do you say, like a rolling ladder, I guess you would yeah, say? Yeah, so it's um, it's a ladder that extends all the way down to the bottom of the transmitter. And, I mean, this is hundreds of feet up off the off the ground. And this is like the final level in the Bond video game where, you're, you know, you have to fight him down on this little thing. This is what we're leading up to. Go on. Right, so Trevelyan had Bond cornered, and Bond activated a trap door that this ladder fell through. Trevelyan calls for a, a helicopter for backup. 
Uh, and he starts climbing down the ladder to try and finish off Bond once and for all. Mm-hmm. And so they have this big fight scene on this ladder. Um, Bond actually ends up getting the upper hand and uh, knocks Trevelyan off and grabs him by his foot. And uh, basically he's like, I have no remorse for what I'm about to do. Let's him go and he falls. And he lived! Yeah. He lived! His back, his back is broken. Yes! And so after after he gets picked up by Natalia, because Natalia managed to sneak onto the helicopter and knock out the pilot, he uh, Bond um, latches on to the bottom of it, and they fly away right when everything exploded. And what happened to the giant satellite when it exploded? It well, all landed. The, the transmitter fell. fell and killed. Crushed 006. Yep. And then from there, they managed to... Um, well, well, before that, actually, there's one thing that we forgot to tell you. So when Boris feels like he succeed, he likes to say the phrase, I'm an invincible. He said it through this whole movie. He said it at the, the other base. He said it about two times at this base. And then, of course, something happened. What happened, Travis? Well, when the, when the base blew up, uh, Boris uh, hid or uh, ducked to get cover and ended up surviving. And he stands up with his arms up to say that he's invincible. Mm-hmm. And liquid nitrogen pours all over him and freezes him to death. Yes. Now, to the part here is uh, Natalia and Bond uh, are trying to find a safe place to land. Bond, Bond falls. Natalia just jumped out of the helicopter yeah. without landing it. And they end up kind of having this little romantic moment here while the helicopter is kind of flying off somewhere and you know bond mentions that you know hey think i want to thank the cia for coming and helping me out and then jack way comes you know and he mentions it to him and he's like well we had your back and every every marine so, person so, so they're like in this open field yeah and jack and uh bond is like i thought you said that you'd be there with the marines when i needed you and he, he said he goes yo marines and out of the ground all around them are like guys in ghillie suits mm-hmm. who have been hiding the whole time. Like, like you couldn't come earlier, right? Right, right, right. But, we'll, but we'll, it's we'll, we'll it's a really a... cool scene because you did not expect it at all. Right, right. And so then it comes to the end of the movie where they fly in the helicopter, and that's the end of Goldeneye. So what did we think? Did Bond did Bond succeed the mission? Hell yeah, he succeed. Yeah, it was a it was basically uh. A payback slash, like, prevent the world from dying movie. It was a little bit of both, and they balanced it out very, very well. It I almost agree. felt It almost felt like they took the license to kill idea and then added to the golden eye mission to it, too. Except, you know, he didn't go rogue. Right. And right, so, right. because remember, M at the very beginning was like, hey, don't make this a personal matter. Like, right. well, you know. But she said that about Oromov, and it turns out that... Uh... Uh, Trevelyan was still alive, and that's that's who the big threat really was. Yes, yes. And, and that's the other thing I like. <clears throat> you have a bad guy who is... The, the movie knew who the bad guy was. Yes, yes, right? yes. We knew Trevelyan was the big bad guy. We thought that it might be Ormov, but mm-hmm. then we find out that he is the pawn and not the other way around. Right, right. And they did a good job establishing that kind of early. right. Or in the half of the movie, and not like led it towards the end. Like, well, who was this person, right? So Bond did complete his mission. So let's go ahead and get into our Bond girl, our Bond villain, our Q branch, um, and then overall thoughts. Um, villain. So, so real quick. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Let's talk about weapons at one point too. Okay. Oh, I was adding that to the Q branch. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. I'm adding all that stuff to it. Uh, villain. So we had we had three. Um, we can count. On the top as the villain, of course, on the top. Uh, this is the first time everybody really got a good share of the pot. Like, most of the time, you like, for instance, we say Moonraker or Spy Who Loved it, you had a villain that kind of took the backseat while the, while the henchman does all the work. And we've seen that also in Living Daylight also. And so... This one here, everybody got a share of the pie, and they did all did a good job with what they were given. Right? No, they they got they each got their own set of screen time. We got an idea of who each person was, and they were all unique in their own way. Right. 
No, it was it was very good. It's it's a really well done movie. Yes, and it was what I really like about it too. It was, I love the fact that they picked an agent this time as the villain, someone that was on the inside doing it instead of like trying to create this whole thing because they cut the story in half to me of developing this character. Like you knew he was an agent, you know all this, you know his history. Now we got it. We move on instead of building this up. Like who is this guy? Now we have to go into this giant adventure to find out what this guy's all about before we finally realize what kind of person he is. And then we go to the climax of it here. Like got straight to the point because you already got all the material right in front of your face. So good right. job to Javillian. Good job to Onatov. Good job to, uh, Ormoff. Ormoff. Good job. All of them on their parts of doing that. The bond girl, Natalia, um, Natalia, I think she they did the best she, they did with her what the what what her ability was and I, I think she's more believable as she, uh, a femme fatale because she's not overly um, badass right but you know? she but she did the best she did they, they did the best with her with the knowledge that she was a computer person so they get her on doing stuff with the computers right but at the same time. They didn't have her doing stuff that was unrealistic. Yes. Like, she's a normal person. This isn't something she does all the time. Yes. So, the way she interacted with Xenia, uh, you know, mm. she distracted her, basically, but mm. got her butt kicked. But, uh, you know, her real strength was the computer stuff. Mm. And so, they didn't they didn't feel the need to beef her up any, which was But I think, nice. too, Travis, I think the real thing about it is... She's she was one of the few Bond girls that had a connection of why she had to be part of this movie, and it was because of Boris. Oh, for sure. So that was the main reason why she was very important for this too. Not some some of the Bond girls were just there because they just happened to be there, and really they had no purpose to be there. More like you could have just, just eye candy. right, right. He's like you could have gone, but here was like no, she's important because one, you know, she had information that yes. they were going after her, and two, you know, she wanted to stop Boris personally in her own way. You know, so they both had their own mission. I think that's what made it so good. I and agree. So uh, let's talk about Q Branch overall. Everything. What, okay. what do you? So real quick, um, Bond switches over from the PPK to the Walter P ninety nine in this movie. Yes, that and was that, a very popular gun, and that's the gun that he's going to use in the franchise from here on out. Um, and I believe until we get to Daniel Craig, I don't remember what they're using. Okay. In those movies, but um, it's very iconic. For Bond to use a Walther, mm -hmm. and then the P ninety nine came out, I believe, in ninety four for and was made part of this movie. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, but outside of that, the um, I wish they would have done more with the car. I was going to mention that I, you know, what I think my theory is on that. I think that the car was going to be used where the tank scene was going to be, and they decided that the tank sound way more appealing than the car because you could put a Bond could have brought a could have had that car there. And it could have been chasing around town with that car, but I think the tank was just more appealing than mid talk. That's just my theory of it. I'm also wondering if the the car was too new, like with uh, when Transformers came out, Bumblebee was the Camaro, and the mm -hmm. Camaro hadn't quite come out yet. It was on the verge of coming out. Um, I don't rem I don't remember if the Z3 was uh, super duper new when this movie came out, uh, but I wonder if it was something like that where. Um, well, BMW would allow it to be in certain scenes, but didn't want anything to happen to it. Yeah, I guess uh, the only reason why I said it was the second thing because you me we mentioned that they had Stinger missiles on it along with a parachute. Now I feel like that there was going to be a scene in that drive scene where he was going to use missiles to block something out of his way, or he could have like wrapped that car on the train with a parachute or something like that to get off. I feel like there was an idea for that car, but then maybe the tank was something better, which I think the tank was 10 oh times a better gosh, idea. yes. Because I think if that tank was... Uh, let me put it like this. For this movie, if that tank scene did not exist, this movie would kind of go a little bit downhill a little bit for me. I agree. And so... Um, but all these other gadgets, like the the camera scope thing was awesome. Yep. I thought that was a great weapon to have. The belt, the belt was... Even though it used one thing, it was great for the one part that they did it for. Well, and then like the grapple gun at the beginning with the laser mm -hmm. was kind of neat. Yes, and the pin was great for for the scene that it was set up for. I'm glad it wasn't Bond just clicking it three times and doing it. There was no scene where it makes sense. Like here, let me click it three times and throw it at you. Right. It had it made sense for a guy that was. They made that for just for that particular scene. They did a good job with that. Well, right, and you don't put together that Boris, like because. I sit and I click pins. Yeah. You know, it's something everybody does. Yes. So when Boris grabs the pin, you're just like, oh, my God. 
Right. What's going to happen? Yes. How is this going to work out? And it makes out? sense. Something's going to blow up. It makes sense. It gets you really excited. Right. And it makes sense because he's the one that would be the only one that would do something like that. Right. So they definitely, I think they thought about that when they wrote like the pin idea. I was like, what's, what's have him do that? So, you know, um, and then, you know, the, the, the overall, I think this movie was actually fantastic going into this. Uh, I think if I was a little bit younger. I don't know how I feel about it, but going at looking at this now as a movie itself, and not even including the video game, the movie itself was fantastic. Oh yeah, no, uh, it was a it was a real pleasure to rewatch, and it's it's winging close up up there with me. Like yeah, it's yeah, it's probably it, in my top five. Yeah, so like it's we're gonna see if this is where you know where the Bonds this Pierce Brosnan series is a winning streak, or where does it stop at? Uh, I I know it's not a winning streak. Yeah, yeah, because now we're getting. Remember the Sean Connery ones was, it was it was kind of in the middle. It took it took a couple of movies to kind of find his tracks. And they were Roger Moore, and then Timmy Dalton just got stopped too early. But this year we're starting hard. Right. No, it, it, it's going to be hard to top this one for sure. Yeah. So speaking of that, we go into our next mission on our next episode where we go into. I at the time when I was young, this was my favorite Bond movie of all time, and that's Tomorrow Never Dies. Okay, I really like this one too. Yes, so we're gonna find out if this one still lives up to what. Well, for me, what it lives up to. Do I remember loving this movie or not? Well, and I think I think. Wait, I'm sorry. You say World is not enough? No, Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, okay, good. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I blanked out there for a second. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, uh, I think this one is actually very relevant to today. Okay. The bad guy. Okay. Is very relevant to today. Okay. All I know about, remember about this movie, about the next one, and hopefully it still lives up to my expectation, is there was a lot of great action scenes. There are a lot of great action scenes, but the motivation of what the bad guy is trying yeah. to do is also pretty, okay. pretty outstanding. Uh, so we'll check it out. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming to listen to our mission. Uh, this was a fantastic mission. But if you haven't, if you like this episode, start working your way backwards and hit up a Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, and our Sean Connery series. You know, I've been posting like crazy, um, just trying to get people to know, hey, we exist. Come back and watch them. So I kind of like kind of loop around Travis I'll just throw random ones it's like hey here's check this out check this out but you know don't hesitate to leave a comment on on my on the Facebook and Twitter page make sure you look up for in-game boss program don't forget that you can leave a comment on YouTube and, and the funny thing about YouTube is you can look up the in-game boss program or you can just look up bond never dies and you'll find it too it all connects but don't forget we're on YouTube Spotify Podbean and uh, Apple Podcasts so check there. we we'll, um, leave a comment. Let us know what your favorite Bond is. Tell us if GoldenEye was good. Do you think the video game was the only thing you remember? Do you think the video game is better than the movie? Do you think the movie is better than the video game? We don't know. I think they're both great in their own way. Actually, together. And so, <laughs> but uh, Travis, anything you want to add before we head out? Nope. Just thank you for watching and listening. And we will see you on our next mission. Ba da ba da.